Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Texas A&M, the Mike Elko era, begins Saturday afternoon with the spring game. And Dill, this is one of those spring games that you're fired up about, right? A lot of positive buzz around this Texas A&M program. Mike Elko absolutely going to work in the transfer portal. A ton of new names, a ton of different looks in terms of coordinators. Want to talk about a few storylines that the boys are keeping their eyes on as Texas A&M plays their spring game this Saturday. Also throwing a few breakout performers that we think are going to put a stamp on what they're going to mean to this Texas A&M program on Saturday. Really excited to get into this one. Before we do, as always, just want to say thank you to you guys. The Texas A&M fans have shown a ton of love to the boys over the last couple of weeks and months. We've had a blast breaking down this program on the recruiting trail in the transfer portal. Can't thank you guys enough for rocking with it. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Much more importantly, breakout players, throw them in the comment section. We are going to give you guys a few of ours as well. And Dill, let's start it off with that. Let's talk about the offensive side of the football. I'm going to kick it to you. Breakout performer for this Texas A&M program Saturday afternoon. I think Ruben Fathery on that offensive line is going to come back and kind of reassert himself as one of those top-tier tackles for this football program, and frankly, in that conference, because I think if you go back to that 2022 year, he had a really, really good season. Last year, dealt with some injuries, didn't really play a whole lot, but I think he's got it. I think they obviously need somebody to kind of step up and be a pro on that offensive line, and I think it's going to be him. I I think he's going to reassert himself. I loved what you saw in 22. I think they need a big bounce back here from him. The biggest storyline for this Texas A&M program, I've been extremely vocal that if this Texas A&M offense kind of just taps into the talent that we know they have on the offensive line, I am a massive fan of Coach Cushing. That's the biggest storyline for this Texas A&M program. No doubt Ruben plays a massive role, Dill. Before we get into the offense, I want to give you guys my personal breakout player. And I think the Texas A&M fans who've been listening for the last couple of months know who I'm going to go with. Give me Ruben Owens, second year running back. It Talk about perfect fit in what Coach Colin Klein wants to do, getting his running backs in space, those one-on-one opportunities to make second-level defenders miss. I don't know if there's a running back that's better suited to run this Coach Colin Klein offense than Ruben Owens. I think you can get him involved in so many different ways. And it's not even a knock on Le'Veon Moss and Mari Daniels, who I think are phenomenal running backs. I just look at Ruben Owens and say, Man, he fits like a glove in this Texas A&M offense, and I think we're going to see that come Saturday afternoon. And I wouldn't be surprised in the least if he kind of asserts himself as that guy where it, yeah. again, you like those other two guys, but kind of show like, well, I'm number one, and, and, and there's no question about it. Because last year was kind of a three-headed machine where I don't think you, anyone really emerged as the guy you needed to get the ball to and really feed. I do think Ruben Owens, if they're going to be an elite ground game, it's going to be led by him. Yeah, and let's get into this offense. I want to say prerequisite to the Texas A&M fans. Would love the assist in the comments section. I tried my hardest to find injury reports and kind of who's suiting up, who's not suiting up for the spring game. It was awfully hard to find. So like, I, we know Jabari Barber obviously out with an injury. If we mention some names that aren't going to be healthy, let us know in the comments section. We lean on you guys for some of that stuff. So appreciate you guys maybe being a little gracious with the injury reports. I tried to find them, couldn't find them, Dill. Getting into this Texas A&M offense, again, another guy I've been extremely vocal about, Connor Wigman. I feel like the whole country just sleeping on Connor Wigman. I always go back to that Miami game and say, he looks so good when you give him protection. I think he kind of starts his breakout year going into year three. I think the coach Colin Klein offense is going to put him in some better spots. He's going to have some really good weapons. I want to see Connor Wigman just have command of this offense and really use and kind of lean on some of these playmakers that he has on the outside. Connor Wigman breakout year, I think it starts on Saturday afternoon. And that is something I think, frankly, you're looking for. And again, you can't put all your, it's not the end all be all, whether he plays good, bad in the spring game, but you do want to see a level of comfort because you kind of look, I mean, this offense is going to look 180 different. It's far more creative. It's far more. (laughs) Yeah. Again, kind of open in a sense. You think about the Jimbo Fisher, or even last year, it didn't feel that different. I mean, it did feel very basic in terms of what they were doing. There wasn't a ton of uniqueness to what they did. And Colin Klein is very much the opposite. Obviously, we've broken down what he likes to do. So I think you do want to see 
how does Connor Wigman look in that offense? And, and is he comfortable? Is the ball getting out on time? Is he making the right decisions? Because again, he, he he's way different than what he was dealing the, with. The biggest difference I see in Coach Colin Klein's offense between in that and Jimbo Fisher's Dill, you talk about the anti quarter quarterback friendly offense. Like that's Jimbo Fisher. Like, he does nothing to help his quarterbacks. You look at Con Klein's offense. I mean, it is extremely quarterback friendly. You give a lot of pre snap motions. You give a lot of easy reads and a lot of ways to get the ball out on time. And then Connor Wigman is going to have a little less on his plate. And you're going to see that arm talent, the five star arm talent that we know he has. He's going to be able to utilize it a little bit more. Dill, another talking point that we have on the offensive side of the football we talked about the offensive line, the running back room, the quarterback room. This wide receiver room has so many different guys. They're going after Keandre Lambert Smith in the portal. My question for this wide receiver room is not necessarily does it have the talent because we know it has the talent. I know Jabari Barber not going to be healthy. Who's going to step up and kind of assert themselves as the go-to wide receivers in this pass catcher room? That's something I'm looking for for this Texas A&M program. Because, I mean, you're kind of right. I mean, you're probably six deep with guys who you really think can be impact players on the outside if you include Micah Tease and some of these guys who maybe haven't emerged yet or even or their transfers, frankly, in Cyrus Allen and Barber. So you do have probably six guys you have. You kind of want to see, like, well, does Micah Tease step up and show that he can do something where he does fit in this offense? Again, John A. Walker, Moose Muhammad, Noah Thomas, really hard to get off the field. But like, can can some of these guys start carving out a niche? Can Cyrus Allen be that deep threat? Maybe replace what they had with Evan Stewart. So I think you can kind of look for what what these wide receivers are going to do and where they kind of fit in, in with what's going. In another, I mean, partially why I love this Texas A and M wide receiver room is that they all do a lot of different things. And we talk about what makes offensive coordinators and coaches so great. It's using your players with the skill sets that they have and putting them in spots to be successful. Colin Klein does a great job of that. Jimbo Fisher, probably not so much. You look at this wide receiver room and say, all right, Moose Muhammad, Elise Slot can separate in that short intermediate route tree. Jabari Barber, kind of that guy too. Noah Thomas, Cyrus Allen, kind of those vertical guys that can win down the field. You throw in a guy like Johnny Walker, who I personally, if they don't add Keandre Lambert Smith, thinks he can be kind of that wide receiver one. You got a lot of different guys that have a lot of different skill sets. I'm fired up to see Coach Colin Klein get to work with all these different tools and the ability to attack defenses in a lot of different ways. Dill, you go to the defense. I'm fired up about this front seven. I, I took a lot of heat in the comment section. We, we did our top five defenses. I put Texas A&M at five. My conversation was when I look at preseason, I want to see elite front sevens. I look at this Texas A&M front seven and say, that could be a very good front seven, especially on the defensive line heading into 2024. And honestly, to me, you're looking for DJ Hicks to kind of uh, – to me, it's – if he plays really good and plays like what what you think he can based on some of the flashes and play a little bit more consistent, frankly, get something out of him like maybe you didn't totally get out of Walter Nolan where, yeah. again, you saw enough flashes, but you didn't see that steady dominance – on the inside, I think, again, we've seen enough from DJ Hicks to make me think he can play that way. I think you'd like to see a really good game from him because I do think you want a little bit more dominance on the inside than maybe what you had last year. Yeah, and if you get that dominance on the inside, I think that lets you kind of keep Shamar Turner at that edge spot where I think he's probably at his best. And I mean, why I'm so high on this Texas A&M defense, Bill, I think you got three guys and Shamar Stewart, Shamar Turner, Nick Skirton, who probably can be top 50 NFL draft picks. I don't know if there's another team across the country that's probably saying that. You have three elite dominant players. I want to see them kind of get to work. And I'm kind of interested to see how they use these guys because you look at Skirton, Stewart, and, and Turner, you probably want them on the field all at the same time. You have some versatility. Nick Skirton is 280. Shamar Turner is what, 295? Like, they, you can use them in a lot of different ways. I'm really excited to see how they get to work with those guys on the defensive line. Tory and York, no questions about that. The question that we do have is, who's that second linebacker that kind of steps up? You know, Texas A&M is sniffing around in the portal at that linebacker spot, but my biggest storyline, still in the back end. They went to absolute work with a ton of different guys that can do a ton of different things. How does this secondary shake out heading into 2024 Going to get some of our answers from that Saturday afternoon here, too. In the middle, because again, you kind of look, there is enough on the offensive side, especially in a game where, again, your offensive line maybe can't be totally exposed because it is a spring game. So you 
quarterbacks do get their shot to rip it around yeah, yes. a little bit. So again, you kind of look, your your secondary is getting in a chance to be tested. And I think you're you, honestly what you're looking for is just fewer breakdowns. You're looking for a much tighter unit, something that again, when we think Mike Elko, that's why they were so hard to deal with at Duke is they just didn't make a ton of mistakes. They didn't, they didn't get the ball or let the ball get behind them, and that was something that Texas A&M just could not avoid last year. So, again, you'd like to see the Mike Elko system where you play rock solid and make teams earn every or every drive that they're going to score on. You probably want to see that today because or tomorrow, I should say, because you just didn't see it enough last year. And I, what, I'm, what I'm looking at is I don't even know if I want to make projections of like what this starting secondary looks like because I – I truly think there's competition at every single spot in the secondary. You're even hearing rumors that guys are getting cross crit. Like Will Lee getting a little work at safety. I think he can be a great boundary quarterback. Kind of intrigued in terms of what he looks like as safety. Mike Elko did a great – you said it at best. Like when Mike Elko was at Duke, that secondary, although not the talent that Texas A&M has in that background going into 2024 – Damn good coach. It was well, it was very well coached, I guess you'd say. That if you can well coach this secondary, like you're looking at a secondary that's going to take massive steps heading into 2024. Dell, we'll break down this game right after it concludes Saturday afternoon. I'm fired up for this one. There's not many programs that have gone through the amount of change in terms of coaching staff, culture, personnel than this Texas A&M program. It's going to be a very very fun spring game. The boys are pumped. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. Would love to hear your breakout performers in the comment section, and we'll talk to y'all 